we are going to call our boy Evan Zatara on, on the logs, and we're going to break down his reasonings for everything he does for his run, which was, again, like I'm showing you guys, this is the world's number one. This is all on the top on the world. Look at this. There's one hunter. And there, a new run just happened, but it was one hunter in the top 126. And he beat his damage 607 overall DPS, 607.8. He beat his damage then before the nerfs. So we're going to break down all of that. Obviously, he has uh, been running the melee hunter this whole time, which is so sick that he, he ran melee hunter in phase one. Um, and he has literally every 100, obviously. The only thing, it's everything is like rank two. It's either rank one or rank two. That's, it's hilarious. What And we'll also, obviously, we'll touch on uh, the new, any changes between the phase as well as, or between here and now and the nerfs, as well as Spell Power Hunter, if it's actually super chatted. So let's, let's call the legend and let me unmute Discord so you guys will be able to hear Discord. I had mute. I had Discord muted on my end also. All right, I'm calling him right now. So we'll see. This run was a goaded run. Obviously, to be able to pull this off, you definitely want a second hunter. Yo, what's up, dog? What's up? <laughs> how you doing today? Good. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Sorry for for postponing again yesterday, but thank you for being here. I'm glad you uh, streamed the run too. You've been streaming again, which has been fun. I've been I lurk when I'm editing, if you're up, yeah, you know? nice. which has been really fun. Um, yeah, I still gotta, you know, increase the quality of the stream, but so far I've just been just putting it on and doing the runs and focusing on leading the guild team. Yeah, I mean, leading, le leading you guys to like, you're doing s ridiculous numbers. You are realistically, you are the hunter keeping hunter alive right now in damage. Uh, on the on like literally in complete raid damages and you're just absolutely pumping so I'd, I'd love to get your insight on your thoughts for all of the fights you're first of all how do you how does hunter feel melee hunter feel after the nerfs that have gone out mm. well i guess i'm biased in the negative direction because i was mostly the uh, survival spec before mm -hmm. which meant you know running lone wolf no pet and that spec is just totally dead, so can't play at all. Uh, so it feels, for me, a lot worse. It's it's just like the mm, the skill cap, I guess, on the on the BM spec, which is meta now. It's just lower. Like you have to press Bestial Wrath, but it's not even on the GCD, so it's not like an extra button really to press. Yeah. Um, but then your half your pet just does so much damage. Yeah, innately, it feels bad having your pet do a lot of your damage. It was already a thing beforehand, before the changes, you were already running it on the first two bosses um, and then respecting because the first two bosses are just so fast. 24 seconds, 25 right. seconds. I mean, ours aren't even fast anymore. Like the uh, the many arrows guy, he's, yeah. his guild is is always either... He's always in the top two for guild all-stars right horde guilds are gapping alliance guilds by like a mile yep um and his kill speeds are you know we're talking like 19 20 seconds which that might not seem like a big difference when you're talking like 19 versus 24 but it's it's like literally everything because we're bm spec yeah you have a hun like a hundred percent uptime like a hundred percent uptime on b show rad exactly he also i was talking to him uh because he's Horde, he gets to pre-pop Blood Fury, too. You've got another CD for you, right? Another trinket to just add extra damage. Pre-pop on the short ones, yeah. Otherwise, he'd probably just fill it in, like, a gap on the long fight. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On, just on the, the those first two fights are just so short mm -hmm. if you're Horde. Uh, Horde is... It's just... There's... I think if you were to technically just sim all settings the same, and then you compared, uh, like, a Night Elf and an Orc, Night Elf edges them a little bit, but because of the reality of the game and how busted Horde are overall, just like the the racial disparity for all the classes added up, and then just shamans being so broken, 
we can't compete with yeah. their kill times, and because we can't keep compete with their kill times, or is just straight up better. The the funny thing, I talked about this in a video this week, and I was talking about it earlier today. But like, maybe yesterday, I posted like a tier list of the classes and talked about how insane Shaman is now, and a lot of people were like, "No, it's not that good. It's not that good. Oh, it's nuts. But, like, it really." really really is gapping things it just changes the game um just having shaman it's it's crazy how strong it is this phase i wanted to ask you so i know you swap we've talked about it, you swap pets right there's there's this idea that the meta pet is wind serpent and this idea that cats are really strong especially the difference is horde and alliance like on horde obviously wind serpent is is great um but you swap pets how what's your take on on pets for the raid it varies a little bit based on horror alliance like you said but uh if all things are equal cat in the first two if you have the option but uh wind serpent if you don't have the option to swap at all is definitely should be your go-to for the whole run because we're talking i think even on the first two bosses where cat is better it's better by like five dps or something yeah. for in, in my in my set but because i'm alliance the gap is actually bigger than that since we don't have a shaman to like have 100 percent storm strike up time the the dream state is kind of rng especially on a fight that short like i'd have to hope that my boomy crits the very first hit otherwise when serpent's falling off yeah it is so we do the one swap right now i do cat for the two and then me and the other hunter swap pets to wind serpent and then we just keep for the rest although i'm pretty sure cat's probably better on menagerie too just because of lap lack of uptime on buffs but i need to need to see a couple more runs i think it, it probably is also i mean well you guys your menagerie one minute 22 seconds you guys are yeah. are you guys cleaving menage yeah our menagerie i think at least it was, it probably still is. We're the fastest Alliance Menagerie, but the fastest Horde Menagerie is like 30 seconds faster or something ridiculous. Really? So, yeah, it doesn't really mean that much. Oh. Maybe 24 seconds. They just put it up the other day. Exhausted is just gapping everybody. Uh, the comp is a big deal. Like, Horde Racial, obviously big, but they run three mages, so it's like, you can't really... It's 24 seconds faster. Yeah, look like at that. Oh yeah, three mages is ridiculous. That's hilarious. But it's just but it, like it's insane to gap anybody by that margin of time. But that's kind of mage. Mages that's, just love that fight. Look at that. Yeah, oh. mages love this fight. Yep. And then the melee hunter in there, he got a one hundred for it, but he was purely just carried by the kill time. Like uh, his his DPS is barely higher than mine in in a like a fifty percent slower fight. Oh, yeah. Just BM up time or B, B, B shell wrath up time is just crazy. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at this one and cut it right, right here. Yeah. It, it's literally, I mean, he probably used CDs earlier to track, but like it's not that much above you at all. No, yeah. And that one you actually shouldn't use CDs earlier, which we can talk about when we break down all the fights. But yeah. Oh, well, we can do that next. My last question. Before we do, how do you feel about Spell Power Hunter? I feel pretty good about it. I mean, I'm never going to play it because you, you'll never catch me playing range in my life. Uh, but let's see, Icky, Icky Hunt in my run, he's right now the top ranged hunter in the world for Complete Raid. And he's slowly adopting some of the stuff I've been pushing on him. But I've got it mostly from this guy, Roxa, who's probably in your chat right now. Uh, he's been, you know... Dgen crunching all the sim numbers for SP Hunter, and the, it looks like it's it's real. I would think just no one's really put it all together in a run yet, right? You got it. You need a really good player in a really good run, which most really good runs aren't bringing range hunters because they're not great unless you're like Icky or the couple top ones. Mm -hmm. um, and then you need to take gear from you know contested gear from casters, which is kind of grief. Not too much, but some. And then just got to all come together with the right, you know, buffs and debuffs and everything. And Icky is doing some of it, right? Like, all the top range hunters are running double SP oil on their weapons now, for instance. No one's, like, yep. melee, melee weaving with their wild strikes or anything anymore. Um, 
don't know if I yeah, can I see think it's it. real. And especially, I think on some of these fights, it's gonna like gap by a lot. Like Menagerie, I think is one of them, and uh, it hasn't been tested yet. I'm gonna hopefully on Sunday when we run, Icky will lean a little heavier into it. He didn't even have Lone Wolf the other day, which is kind of a big deal. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so he, I think even he could be, like, he's rank one complete rate for Ranch Hunter right now, mm -hmm. and I think he could be doing so much better, even still. So, I know we, like, meme and dunk on Hunters a lot right now, but maybe if they're given, you know, given a little time, they might surpass the, some other, you know, DPS specs besides Frost Mages, I don't know. Yes, it's literally Ranged Hunter is only beating Frost Mage right now, but, um, all right, Ranged, so, we'll actually try it, uh. I'm I'm hesitant to try it, but it it looks like it'd be really fun. It it looks like it well not fun, but it it'd be interesting. I'm just like yeah, interesting. There could be times intriguingly to potentially like maybe see if it's worth it to swap to it in a speed run. Um, and I'm I'm not sure yet, but I definitely think it's just like a a design flaw on Blizzard's part for that to be the meta at all. Just I don't know, they're scared to buff what really matters for range hunters. That's true. I think they're they're worried that it'll be busted in PvP. Right. Um, you don't. Do you not have the double fist yet, or do you have this because it's the enchant on? Um... I just got the double fist the run prior to this, uh, so I use the Vanquisher sword on the first two because I don't do any like enchant swapping or anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're I'm... also so close. They're, yeah, they're super super close. You saw that at my my brand new hunter. My yeah, new hunter. I saw. My brand new hunter got both weapons in its. I've done three runs now, and one run both fist weapons dropped, and then the other runs it was one of each. So now I have I have two sets of it for this oh, weekend. Wait, you have? Hold on, you have two sets? Excuse me. I have, <laughs> what? My brand new hunter has, yep, two sets. I have both oh. of them for dismantle enchant, and both of them for. Uh, for plus three weapon damage and chance. That's absurd. It is. <laughs> and it's and I've literally done three runs. Yesterday we got the like 18, 17 run for the world record. Uh -huh. um, and then it got deleted. Uh rats oh. is rats is dumpstering everybody. Like it, it was an insane run. Um and and but it got really lucky. Um, okay. First boss. First boss, you play with obviously the cat. What are the things that you do to prep to prepare? Because melee hunter doesn't have the craziest skill gap like you were talking, especially as BM. There's a lot of RNG involved, but a lot of preparation oh, yeah. goes into being able to actually perform well, right? Right. Yeah. On this one, and I don't know that it's the best yet because I have seen some other tech recently. Uh, so I don't. We had. We don't have to get too deep into that, but just basically try to put uh, a trap down, an explosive trap, uh, where you will start the boss. Which you can choose to start the boss in the tunnel on his spawn, like we do. Um, I'm still kind of griefing myself in a way on that if you want to show it. But uh, like, there's, there's. It looks like Warcraft Logs doesn't start the fight until the first person does a hostile action to the boss. So you can actually allow him to travel a little bit if you wanted to. So as long as you know where your you got your team is starting, make sure an explosive trap is down because you can't guarantee like an immolation trap will hit the the boss you want because it's yeah. two ads like on top of each other. And the only bot damage that counts is the um is the damage on is, grub. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. are all of the consumables you use? Cuz people can see your entire inventory is just stacked. Yeah, um if you rewind a little bit You'll see the weak aura will be really long because I don't have anything popped yet. Oh, yeah. I might yeah, even share go. that with me. Yeah, I got you. It's, uh, it's also pinned in the, um, in the melee discord. Oh, in the general clutch. Channel. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, you know, the, the basic stuff is on there. Strength scroll because, you know. It's stronger. We don't have a better, yeah, we don't have a better consume yet. Um, the Agi... Elixir or scroll, if you're, you know, if you're gaming, you can get the threes. But I don't think I've used any threes yet. Uh, Coalesce Regret, which is uh, the hidden plus one stats. That's one All the that, HP consumes. That's one that a lot of people don't know about. Uh, Elixir oh. Coalesce Regret gives you plus one to all stats. 
Yeah, it's wild. I think the most asked question in my Twitch chat so far has nothing to do with Melee Hunter itself. They're all asking, what is that green elixir? What, why do you have this pot? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, plus, it, plus one stats. It's clutch. And it's, it's like, it's for how long it lasts and lasting through death, it's, you know, you don't have to spend that much on it. Pretty nice. Yeah, and then you've got double spell power with the firepower and... Uh, right. Yep, arcane elixir, arcane elixir. And, power. and those are, as a melee hunter, those are purely for uh, dragon breath chili. So in, if you ever do get my weak aura, it'll say it on there. It's super low prio. Like if you're, if you're trying to break the bank, you can go ahead and send it, but probably not that worth. Yeah, I mean, if you're breaking the bank, you have look at your oil of emulations. Yeah, yeah, also true. I don't have the best uptime on it, but um, I could definitely use more for a little bit more DPS, for sure. And are there any gear swaps you're using on this fight in particular? I, I know that we and a lot of people, it's easy to try to go for a chicken um, on this fight, like because you can just like That's... leave it up on the ads, yeah, early, before you even start the actual boss encounter. I've been meaning to do it, and because the trinket's so new, I like forget until like almost all the ads are dead and don't get a real chance to proc. But I shouldn't. You know, I like I, I care mostly about the complete raid damage. Mm -hmm. So doing well consistently across all the bosses. And this is definitely if if that's the play, then this, this is definitely the not the boss to put on because it's so short. Exactly. Yeah. The impact overall is pretty low. Um, so I think the next run I'll probably try to get it up before Pummeler, like save some trash or something and. Pop it there, and then probably before uh, thermal plug. We'll see. Yeah, because having the uptime on those longer fights would be kind of. I mean, it would it's be you. obviously massive. Yeah, that's it. You know, yeah. it's not just on you; it pops on your party. So, Marios, you pop. Everybody it, gets you know, their the ads, yeah. Five percent melee haste. Yeah, if everyone can get it, we we actually just got a third one in our like speed run comp. Ooh, which is actually speed running it's great yeah the chicken itself pumps yeah it is it is like a we're very very like we were very happy to see that drop yeah you're probably getting pretty consistent squawks if i had to guess i guess me like he's a little aggressive though compared to all yeah. the trinkets you can pop he like he yeah. runs that stuff you have very particular areas you can use it yeah okay so you 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 guys do attack the boss where he spawns you drop an immolation trap um uh, sorry explosive. Expl explosive trap um did you pre-pop drink it or did you just swap it on and it's oh it's swap, on cooldown. remember i i meant to do um it's okay i wasn't meaning to use that trinket anyway like for the on use but mm -hmm. the uh i was meaning to do the chicken and then forgot about it uh r.i.p the trap before before this run though i had only popped that melee trinket four times in total and half of the time so twice I got the chicken debuff where you get to do nothing. Oh so the start God. of this run, I was thinking, man, maybe I just won't even use. I just use it for the AP. I don't know, but I do end up using it once later. You um, well, first of all, you pumped a, a 1k DPS on that fight. Pretty yeah. solid RNG. Uh, the trap didn't get to go off. RIP. And another thing, like, what explosive are you using? You don't use gloves. Do you use gloves on this one? I, I mean to, but I didn't. It, it was all scuffed in my head thinking about the chicken thing. Yeah. But yeah, so you asked about gear swaps. I used the previous phase leatherworking gloves for this boss and the next one, since obviously the uh, mech gloves don't work on these two. You just oh. got to make sure that you uh, do it after your helm haste goes away, since the two effects don't stack. Yeah. Um, but one thing you, you do is you're alchemy also right still yes which was uh it was kind of big that they i no one knew when i say no one i'm so, I, like even rain the sim dev i'm pretty sure didn't have it coded into the sim no one knew that the alchemy and enchanting stuff wasn't giving range dp so like my macro has the, the potion to be linked with bestial wrath at all times since the cooldowns are equal the uptimes are almost equal, and you assume you're going to get ranged AP for your, for your pet. pet yeah. But we never were, uh, and so now we are. So they, Melee Hunter, in a way, got a, a little buff. Yeah, that's actually, I mean... We got a little something back, yeah. A little something that's not bad, yeah, we'll take it. Um, 
also those potions are are juicy it's cool to see someone using that so you don't have for explosives then you have to use the ones easy. you can yeah yeah got to use easy throw Let's go on. All right. Do you make any changes or what are your thought processes moving into uh, this next boss? I, I, you don't use the AOE trinket now anymore. What are you? Uh, viscous. Yeah. Just, just basic standard trinkets. The, uh, the ads spawn like in the fast kill time, the ads are spawning like halfway through the fight. So you're losing, if you're using the breath trinket, you're just using, losing too much AP for too long. Um, I'm pretty sure if you have double decent DPS trinkets, the fire trick is probably just a menagerie thing, and that's like if you're really, really min maxing. Yeah. And for this boss, for any of the bosses, do you swap runes for any of the bosses? What all runes are you using? Uh, no, at the moment, I mean, I will this next run, but not to my benefit, to the the raids DPS benefit. I I use. You know the basic stuff, uh, you know melee spec and all that. But the chest rune is probably the most different part. Uh, like they've said in chat, I use Master Marksman, which is five percent crit. Mm -hmm. uh, surprisingly, it is stronger than ten percent personal stats from Lion, as long assuming you have another hunter running uh, the Lion rune. Yeah. Uh, pets just gain a lot from our crit, which is pretty nice. Jesus. <laughs> I love that. Kill time is so epic. It's Just... so much faster, though. Oh, can't wait. What, till your horde, or what? I mean, we can be better, too, right? Like, not all of us are playing our best. I'm not playing perfectly, either. In these first two fights, I'm pretty sure I missed, like, probably three wing clips on the first one or something. Just because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still, like, programmed for survival, and... I'm pretty sure I hit the carve button sometimes, and I'm not supposed to because it's not there. Um, but yeah, I'm sure other people aren't. When the fight is so short, every single GCD matters. Yep. Your RNG obviously matters, but like if you misplay at all, you're losing so much more. So like if you looked at the log, I'm pretty sure I don't land a hit on Grubbis until one second in. And that's, and that's like 5% of the fight. Yeah, that's actually <laughs> massive. I was actually going to say, one thing that, that I was doing towards the end of last phase for fun, because um, I was melee weaving, obviously, at the end of last phase, was I would swiftness potion to be able to do it faster. Um, oh. Have you ever thought about swiftness potting to get... I don't know if it shares a CD with the, the alchemy one, but to get not. in and... So you could connect technically faster which it's on true. that fast of fights, because Viscous Fallout, you, you have to run to it. It's like less than a second on that, but. Yeah, that would, that sounds smart to me. Uptime is, you know, as a speedrunner, you know uptime is everything, so. Yep. When a fight's that short, yeah, you're not mana potting for sure. Yeah, that'd probably be okay. Oh, I think it's, I guess the, for me, the scariest part would just be, uh, if I'm really on top of, like, first hit when everyone else is hitting that i'm also risking getting, uh, getting slapped in the face yeah exactly <laughs> and then so after first two bosses you're swapping to the wind serpent and again a wind serpent gets a lot more value or feels like you get a lot more value it does it gets a lot more value as horde it just right if uh in a in a sim it with gear similar to mine raid comp similar to mine you're looking at a 35 dps gain uh, having serpent over a cat on the the bosses coming up, but obviously as alliance, it's less than that because the dream state uptime isn't perfect. Yeah, uh, like the storm strike uptime would be, and you know menagerie exists, and that's multi-target with not good, not great debuffs on everything. So the in in the real world, the gap is a little smaller than that thirty five, but you know unlike yeah. pummeler, pummeler is is basically a Patrick fight, so. Yeah, he, he, we just need a crit, yeah. and then you got it. Get some rage for the warrior. Right. Which, I mean, there's some other... I didn't know that Boomies were doing this, but they do pre-fight tech, too, if you give them the chance. What is it? It has something to do with, like, a, there's, like, a 10-second timer after their last spell. I don't know if... I don't remember if it's a specific spell. I'm, so, I'm sure someone will speak up in the chat, but if you can start the fight within that 10 second window, then you get extra bonus damage. So, boomies are getting it. 
Ferals are building up combo points, trying to bring them into the boss. Warriors, obviously. So there's a lot of people doing pre-fight tech now. What is... Am I... Yeah, there you go. They're, they're saying it right now. Star Surge. Star Surge, 70% damage. Oh, that's sick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What is this bear roaring? It looks like you're, you have a demo shout for demo roar on you. Oh, that's just um, that's the spirit bond in the BM tree. There really aren't that many uh, DPS talents, so I have. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's what like plus plus HP over time or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> that's hilarious. I love it. Um, yeah, and then do you are you using Boglings for every fight? Yes, every fight. Yeah, that's expensive as shit, but every fight. I think a bo boggling alone is 12G or more per run. Oh my god, how much gold are you spending per run, do you know? On the low end, 30, probably closer to 50 average. I mean, it's not that bad. We're, up. Yeah, we're not, we're hunters, right? So Yeah, we have our to. Farm, our farms are, are just strong too, so it's not like the end of the world. It's, it, it's not like being a warrior and only having a warrior and spending 50G on consumes, which they could do the same thing, because physical DPS just costs a fortune to do well on. That's one thing that most people don't understand is so much of the difference, obviously, between uh, like people that are pumping really well and not, other than like Alondo is cheap, but like usually it's, it's a, especially on Hunter, a lot of prep that goes into it. Having a yeah. good comp, allowing you to not have to play the aspect of the lion helps a nice bit. And then literally so many consumes and being ready. Yeah, the, the lion thing, I wouldn't care so much. Like I, I was saying, I'm going to actually not run lion. I mean, I'm not going to run Master Marksman on Menagerie next week because I'm going to hopefully have Icky run uh, Lone Wolf because I think it'll be a huge game there for him. Yeah. Because it's, it's like a 10 DPS difference for me. It doesn't really matter that much. But the people who are kecking about Boggling Roots, I mean, you guys care so much about gear, and Boggling Root is like the size of a gear upgrade. It is actually it, very it reads large. weird, but it's like five DPS or something, and most of your upgrades in this raid are that or less. Yeah, Boggling, boggling Roots are very, very useful. Uh, I know people that are there at all times. Uh, yeah. Simon, Simon Eyes is there at all. Like, he's always got characters logged off on his Horde characters. Oh, yeah, I don't do that. I, I actually got one of my freshies jacked by a, like, a, a botted, a bo no, a botted Rhett Paladin. He, he was AFK, he was just sitting there, and you saw as soon as the Boglings appeared, he had uh, some kind of script to insta Divine Storm them all, <laughs> and I was so oh sad. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I get afraid. I, I'm, like, afraid to turn in the quests when I'm doing it on the leveling character. I'm like, is someone stealth here? Right. Yeah. It's six G in in the trash. It's, it's expensive. Yeah, it's a, it's a really. I mean, they're great too. Yeah. On oh, you have the dog whistle. I know that dog whistle is not banned. Is there any I other? <laughs> and so you still haven't used it at all, right? I mean, I think I used it. That's the same dog whistle I've had since this phase started, and I've used it twice. So there's one charge left on it. The damage is just really low from what I've seen. So I haven't. I bring it thinking maybe I'll just pop it, but. I don't know. It's it's nowhere near as busted as it was last phase, or like a Grinch. Yeah, it's a it's a small dude. The Grinch was just it's too bad, too strong. <laughs> I remember okay, well, I was, I was like good. the day it came out, I made a video and I was like, "Use this now. It's getting nerfed. Like it's either getting nerfed or removed because this is too strong. So have fun." Right. For for uh. Electrocutioner, do you what strategy do you guys use? Is it we just we still keep it pretty simple? Like we could do better ones, but our it's it's taken our raiders a while just to adopt this one and not mess it up. So we do two range stacks mm -hmm. and um, we have one person from that group step further away when it's their group's time to soak and then they step back in. So it's like a healer on one side stepping away. They get uh, chained, he, he walks in, and then a range from the other stack steps away. They get chained, same thing, and just back and forth. So only two people are moving. Yeah, that makes sense. The, we have a similar thing. Like We have a melee stack and a range stack, but they're just on his feet, and then like a healer takes a step out on each side when it's their turn. Yeah, I think that's better 
for sure than what we're doing. You never really have to move. Although, if the range stack is right on its feet, uh, the range stack could get knocked back from the knockback. So I guess it, you, you just want to make sure you don't get knocked back. Wait, can range even outrange knockback? I wasn't even aware. I don't. I don't no. play range, so I I thought they I know always you can get resist back. it. I know you can resist it. I don't know. I don't have a ranged either. I have only <laughs> melee. Oh, it is infinite range. Okay, so you can't outrange it. All right. Well, in that case, just as it's being about to go out, just take a step in front of the boss, or hope you RNG resist. Yeah, as a range, man, imagine that walking in front of the boss. Just ugh. As an opener, as you're running into bosses uh, or as you're getting knocked back, what global are you using to continue doing a little damage as you're moving? Oh, I, I, I run in front of the boss. Dang. Dang. 100%. Yep. I, I was watching my run from my the 18-minute speed run yesterday, and I was like, I don't know why I'm getting knocked back here. Why am I not just positioning better? This is so noob. So... There's almost no downside. You can time it really well because the uh, the weak or timer is pretty good. Yeah. I don't time it super well, so I'm probably risking an extra parry than I should. But um, yeah, you don't lose much for going in front. Even if the tank has the debuff, it's like not that much damage for a healer to worry about. Uh, uh, here we oh, go. Yeah, the opener on this one, since we drag him into a spot, I try to emulate it uh, where we're bringing it. So you get a little bit extra. But otherwise, this fight is pretty much the same. The way you know the, the way we do it for melee, if, and a lot of dad gills out there are still having melee like run out of melee range. Definitely find figure out a strat for yourself where you don't have to do that. So if you have the um, the little AOE around you, ideally you allow yourself to just go far left or far right away from the melee. Yep. Or if all else fails, go stay on top of the tank. Better than it's better to eat a couple parries than just not do anything. We do a similar thing. We have just like the melee person goes to the back. Yeah, you do. You do not. Per it's not perfectly timed. So you do have like the risk of an extra parry there for a, a second. Yep. But this is it's easy. The melee should never have to have downtime. No one should have downtime. Everyone loses DPS if right. someone can't attack. Correct. I think something scuffed here, too. I can't remember what happened because it was in the range stack. I think maybe right here we kill him just before people lose their DMF. I'm pretty sure a stack was about to receive uh, a second hit in a row. So that what was that like less than half a second <laughs> before we lost DMF? Oh, and if he would have gotten this cast off. Yeah, oh yeah, everyone's off like, off. everyone started moving. <laughs> yeah, look at this. Yeah, people were dead for sure. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. 41 is our max range. Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it wouldn't be worth it to stand at 41 yard range. Just having one person move so that your your casters basically never have to move is just so much better. Yep. So yeah, definitely the the single range stack with only one person moving the whole time is definitely definitely ideal. Yeah. But uh, but our our healer is the one who's been messing it up a little bit. So we haven't put I haven't put that on him yet. Maybe maybe next week when um, the MF is back, and if we die, then we can actually go get it again. <laughs> All right, Menagerie, you talked about potentially going with Cat again on this fight specifically. Um, yeah. What yeah, Menagerie has the most... It's the highest skill cap boss that exists in the raid right now because there are so many little things you could do for dps gains and there's so many you have to think outside the box to even come up with the things that you would want to do and definitely that's one of them because you know people they sim they're like okay this is this is the best so this is what i'm going to use but you know it's it's like a triple for melee it's like a triple target fight and uh you're not going to have especially on alliance you're not going to have great Dream state uptime on everything. You're not gonna have perfect armor debuffs on everything. So you know your single target patchwork sim is definitely not the end all be all here. So yeah, I would definitely I would be cat here um, in my comp, and mm -hmm. I knew that going into this, but I didn't really feel like the, doing the swap thing. You guys, I did this yesterday. Do you guys 
choose to still kill the egg, or are you going to move away from killing the egg and just moving away from it? Because you just killed question. it. I yeah, I kill it every time, and I think I'm the only melee who who focuses it every time. So obviously that's the DPS loss. Um, I think we can probably ignore it. I just I like I don't would know what the radius is on when it's exploding. It's only ten yards. I found that oh, out today. Wow, I should have known that. Yeah, ten yards is pretty chill. We can definitely just walk away from that, and I can not waste globals hitting into it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think on this run, I was like. I don't know, 10, 15 DPS lower than my best run before the nerf, which, you know, this was the fight. If there was any fight that was going to be untouchable, it was going to be this one, because this is the one where not being able to run survival on wolf has the biggest impact, right? When it's, yeah. when it's AoE, your pet doesn't really do AoE, so your, your ability to carve, your plus trap damage, all that stuff goes down when you don't get to be lone wolf. So this was the fight we thought. But... My DPS is barely lower than mine back then, so kill time is just carrying it all the way. You see there at the oh, there's probably want to rewind a little bit, but we scuffed a little bit. We're still getting like our raids damage split down, but someone it, I'm like calling here at the end for melee to get off of the chicken, and they're just yeah. not. So they kill it early, and you got like 20% HP I think on one of the mobs still, and we had to like rush it to before the um the uh, heal. Yeah, and the dragon's so kind of out there. of the way, so it's not like right. perfectly even. Oh yeah, the I'm, the I'm pretty sure we go and eat a sheep. stun too, maybe. Yep, yep. On the sheep. Yeah, look at how high. Yeah, it is. you're stunned. Oh, that's rough. So without that happening, I'm I'm probably that run beating my old record, which is wild to think of. That it what was your old record? Do you know? It was like, mm, let me look. Maybe six sixty or somewhere around there. It was gonna be close. It was gonna be very close. Yeah, it was very close. But that just means that, you know, probably in the next week, I'll just end up gapping the old, you know, my old record. Obviously, Narcotics has the current record with that crazy 58-second kill time. Yeah. yeah. But you're actually, I mean, he's not too far ahead. It's like 40 or yeah, 30 damage. Yeah, he is. He is 17 DPS ahead right now. No, not even. Yeah. Yeah. What are, okay, so you talk about min-maxing things to increase your DPS on that fight. There's a lot of ways you can cleave. You lost down, you, I mean, you, you lost DPS just by attacking the egg alone, um, right. which is going to be a, a nice way to increase your damage. What, what should everyone focusing on increasing their damage on that fight kind of look out for? Uh, number one on this one is definitely prep. Your raid has to be ready to just so that you can triple target cleave, because a lot of people aren't doing that yet, right? Mm -hmm. So what we do is we fire protection potion pretty far early, so it doesn't like really interfere with anything. And then before the fight, we all magic resist pot as well. And then we do like a minute timer, and we go into the fight. So we ha we'll have the fire pot up for the first overheat, yep. and we'll have magic resist 100% of time on the whole encounter, since the encounter is shorter than because the, the, the potion lasts three minutes we pull one minute after we pop it we have two minutes, it's up the whole time so we take just less damage from overheat, which enables us to do this more safely right? because yeah. ideally uh, let's see, for a while we were running two tank and one healer, I think we were probably like the only like top guild doing that for a while most of them were already doing one tank and two healer so we just switched to that either this one or the run prior which definitely feels better like, one tank, he's not taking that much damage anymore, especially with all the prep we're putting in. And uh, the healers are just safe. And we run a Boomy, uh, or a Druid Flex, so he does solid damage. He does, like, the tank's damage, even while healing, like, full-time. Yeah. So it's not too big of a loss. And it, and it worked out for us. But that, that prep is huge. Like, if, if you have to run more healing and less damage because you're not just popping potions before the fight starts, then you're just doing less damage so i'd say that's the biggest one for most people that i'm sure like 99 percent of teams aren't doing yeah um, i mean that's a big just even the magic resistance but like the damage from over to overheat and being able to absorb a ton of that and then have mm -hmm. the resistance up is just so much on the entire raid so much damage yeah. on the whole raid and you did, I'm assuming, I actually didn't pay attention. Yeah, I'm, yeah, there's oil of immolations. That's, this is like the big, like, make sure you oil of immolation. Right. right? Oil has the biggest impact here. You know, it's doing, 
in ideal scenario, you're doing triple the oil damage as normal because you have three targets in melee range at all times. Um, every explosive you use is more important here. Um, but the other biggest thing I'd say, because you mentioned, right, um, what narcotics hit his cooldowns early, I think? Yeah. Yeah, don't do that. This fight has a, has a damage amp phase. So not only is the overheat mechanic, like dealing with it gives you more damage because you get to have three targets in melee range, right? But while he's overheated, all those targets are taking like, I think it's 20% extra damage. So that's when you want to blow everything. And then you'll pump them down. Yeah, like everything in range will take more damage. So that should be, I don't remember off the top of my head, but that should be where you see in the log that I pop Bestial Wrath and my potion and everything. For now, also, for now you are... Um... You're getting two explosives out, but if you if the fight gets short enough, you just need to save your explosive for when everything's overheated. Right, explosives. What? Uh, it's effectively a thirty second cooldown because it has to be used with Fane, and Fane won't always work. Uh, you know, because it's 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 a triple target, so yeah, having three it. targets in melee makes your Fane less likely to work, and also just the pet having three more targets to potentially, even if you have the passive macro thing uh, it's less likely that you'll actually drop combat so it's a little annoying but you know if it's with good rng on my kill i could have gotten three out i don't remember how many i got i'm pretty sure i got a feign you know resist or something in there somewhere but yeah so that that's extra damage too and if you get to get a chance to do it during the overheat even better because you know it does the the upfront explosive damage and then it puts the dot on them and overheat lasts quite a while so they're taking extra damage from both effects yeah that was pretty i mean you guys are, are min maxing this to the most and i love it i mean technically you're not using like double scroll yeah, like, right that's like a minuscule thing right you that's got... uh that's so expensive that would yeah. you know, that would drive my yeah you know we were talking 50g and thinking that's a lot the uh Rank three scrolls are nuts on my server. Yeah, I was looking at them this week or before my run, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude! Am I really about to spend so much gold on me and my pet?" Right. Bruh. I think maybe maybe those scrolls alone would be more than fifty G just to do what it'd be two strength scrolls on yourself, and then two strength scrolls and two agi scrolls for your pets. Six three rank three scrolls for a run. Yeah, no, yep. I'm good. Yeah, it's it's actually crazy. You guys timed that out really well. You where you get your boomkin gets his pre pop kind of on this boss. Yeah, I don't know if it if this one I think this RP lasts a little too long for him to actually benefit. I think uh, it's more okay. than ten seconds. It's, it's, uh, maybe not. Look at that. Maybe it's quicker than I thought. Yeah, buffs up. Everyone's getting all their buffs up, scorch and everything. Mm -hmm. We have some issues with, I think, I think this was the run. We had some issues with Homunculi. And in, like, right now, I'm probably in the VOD, I'm probably calling it out. And he's probably trying to figure it out why. I think it was this one and maybe the phase after before he figured it out. So this boss, you know, it could have done better. It's not going up. And Dez is probably thinking, you know, if I start to hit Sunder, then, then Homunculi will go up and I'll have just wasted, like, three globals. How many globals go... Are you, are you guys having your Warlock first global um, Curse Wreck? It looked like it was like it was pretty fast. It was like two yes. seconds in. Generally, it should be one of his earliest things. Uh, like the, Especially on the fight like this, yeah. where there's no precast available. It should just be his first GC. Uh, but, you know. Are you guys Sometimes. using resistance potions again just for the damage on this fight? We so do. Know? But this one, it's definitely less necessary on this one. Like, this is one of those fights where the solo priest, even with Homunculus, has no trouble healing it. And since we're waiting around for our CDs anyway, we do it. But this is a fight where I wouldn't mind losing the magic resist. Yeah. Obviously, the min max stuff, I, I heard you talking about it. I think I caught the tail end of your like speedrun review on your melee hunter. Mm hmm. Um, obviously, as soon as he goes away, you should have Viper up. I mean, technically, when he goes like below 50% HP, you should already yep. be swapped with Viper. Just yeah, because uh... nothing counts on the logs, and it's, the phase is technically started. And you can get some hits. Like, the second he goes below 50, you can get some hits to get some of that mana back. Right. 
So that's that's definitely somewhere you want to max this fight because you it's even in a in a quick kill guild you're still gonna go um if you're not if you're not utilizing that that mana. But also you know the feign immolations are pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I do that as well. Always getting those up. So is that like you get four immolation traps off in total because there's four phases you get. You know, the mana you get um this is one of those fights where alchemy is a bit stronger than you would uh, think just by looking at a sim because also the same thing with the bestial wrath because there's downtime right so yep when downtime doesn't really count against you which logs are being changed I th pretty soon I'm pretty sure uh, when downtime doesn't count against you but it's still there then that makes all the like potent CDs stronger so any any two minute cooldown is just more beneficial than usual on this fight. Will you use consumables with one phase left? There it is. Okay, it just goes for the... I was like, you don't need the Mighty Trolls, but oh, you did click it. I mean, it's uh, not even really necessary, right? There's a gold gone. <laughs> We're going to send it. What, what if, I, I don't know, the tank misses and I get clapped in the face right here? I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. You're like, <laughs> and we have to wait till next week for Darkmoon Fair again. This is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um I'll I'll pay 1G for the insurance. We're good. If if you are someone asked this but like if you're engineering Goblin Mortar is amazing. Oh, yeah. Goblin Mortars are so good if you're engineering. He's alchemy. Yeah. The that and the landmines like the or those explosives mine, yeah. are like in the beginning I wasn't even considering those. I was only looking at okay. Solid dynamite same as easy throw dynamite. The profession specific irradiated bombs, all bosses are immune to. Why am I NG? And I just swapped. Like, I, like the, that thought went through my head early and I just swapped insta. And I didn't even consider that uh, the, those landmines are strong. They're like yeah. three times stronger than dynamite, I think. They take a couple seconds to, to charge, but there's multiple bosses. There's so like many bosses. Grubbis just... is amazing. You can just pull it on. Technically, if you wanted to, you could pull it onto every boss if you wanted to like set the time right right so ng is definitely stronger than i was thinking it was yeah. uh is it stronger than alka en enchanting mm, debatable definitely depends on the fight like menagerie it might be especially if like you're in the the kill speed where you can get two uses off instead of one like uh, if we're all sub one minute then you only get one explosive it's not not that crazy but uh, i could definitely use two of them and they'd be pretty strong yeah, you, you did get, um, I think you might have gotten two off on Menagerie. But yeah, if it's, I did, it was definitely a misplay. Yeah, it's just, I mean, really, it's it's using everything you can and using all of the CDs. The, actually, I don't think, do you use, oh, you do, you did use the trinket in this one. Oh, did I? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, nice. I think I used it on, uh, Pummeler also, and just sent it. Uh, we didn't know, or I didn't know, and a lot of us didn't know that if you there's two different uh, backfires you can get. Obviously, I knew about the chicken, which is the worst one because there's nothing you can do about it. You sit there, do nothing for however long you're a chicken. And but there's also that whirlwind that you can backfire into. It does a little damage, but not anywhere near as much damage as you can do. But you can cancel it. So Ooh. knowing that I was, I just started pressing it. I think so I did. I guess I did get two uses off and didn't remember. That is, I actually didn't know that either. That's pretty nice. So this, this is like literally, it's so interesting to see. You're kind of semi. I mean, now someone got actually decently close, but you're kind of gapping all hunters on on overall for the bosses, and that's what you care about the most is in one specific run. Um, but you're the one hunter in the top 100 now, and you're beating your old runs from before the nerfs. Is there right. how much damage do you think you can get extra out of this? Now you have obviously you have a uh, a fist weapon, and but you don't have two sets of the fist weapons, which is like not big, not huge, but it's like small. It's it's a thing though. Yeah. How much I more mean, can you do you, you would think want, you can get out? I think conservatively. I'm pretty sure I could add 50 DPS to that. 